In this episode of Derp Star, I added the procedurally generated snowflakes to the Olympus dimension that I made a couple weeks ago in a separate project. Then using the viewport texture, I was able to get the shatter effect to still work, so I'll be talking about that as well. So first, I want to copy the files from the snowflake generator that I made a couple weeks ago. I'll copy everything but the icon and the project.godot. And I'll make a new folder for the snowflake bumper. Paste the files in there. And I'll rename the main to builder. So there's no confusion there. So now when I open up the project, I want to run the snowflake scene by itself first. So when I try to open the main file, it says the dependency is missing. So if you right click and go to edit dependencies, then I can reassign the GD script to the new location. So that's builder.gd. And now if I open up the scene and play the current scene, now the snowflake generator does still work. So now I can add it to a bumper. So I'll rename the builder node and in the script, I'll get rid of the input function so it doesn't redraw every time you click. Then I'll make a new inherited scene from the bumper ship base class and save that in the snowflake folder. Then set the starting health and points value. Then I'll drag the builder scene as a child of the bumper. And in the dimension Olympus default biome, I'll add the snowflake to the bumper list. So append and load the snowflake bumper.tscn and in the main class I'm loading dimension 1 which is the Olympus dimension so now it's throwing an error because it needs the collision shape to do the shape casting to make sure that the bumper can spawn so I need to add a collision shape. So I'll add a collision polygon 2D to the snowflake bumper and rename that to collision shape so the spawner can find it. And I'll set the size of the points array to six I want it to be a hexagon, so you can just search polygon vertex calculator, which brings up the mathopenref.com slash chord polycalc, although I'm sure there are other calculators that work. So I'll set the center point and the number of sides Set the center point to 0 and the number of sides to 6. 
and I want the radius to be 165. So it generates the vertices for me in a table. And now I can just copy the points into the vertex packed vector array. And as you can see, it forms a regular hexagon. And now if I play the scene again, it does actually spawn the snowflakes. Of course, they are much too big. So I'll go ahead and make them smaller now. So in the Builder class, I'll set the grid size to 30 and the cell size to 3.25. And then I did adjust the number of facets to 15. And I reduced the number of grow cycles and slightly lowered the branch end chance as well. So now the snowflakes are much more reasonable, as you can see. And they have a bit more detail because of the changes that I made. So now the issue is when you destroy one of the snowflakes, it throws an error in the explode function. So to fix this, I'll remove the builder node from the snowflake bumper and add a viewport sub, -view sub viewport instead. So just for example, if I add the default icon as a child of the sub viewport and reset the position, now I can add a polygon 2D and the shape doesn't matter as much as the collision shape, so I'll just kind of outline the hexagon roughly. And now I can set the texture of the polygon 2D to a viewport texture, and then set the target to the sub viewport. So now the icon is visible. It is cut off though, so you used to be able to add a camera 2D to center the display. That doesn't seem to work anymore though, so since the viewport size is 512, I'll set the icon position to 256 and then the polygon texture offset to 256 as well. So now the icon is centered within the hexagon. So instead of the icon, I'll add a node 2D named Builder and attach the 
Snowflake Builder script to that. And I'll set the position offset on the node 2D. So now when I play the scene, I should be able to see the snowflakes. And they still throw the air, so I'll fix that in a second. But they do have this gray background behind them. So to fix that, in the sub viewport, I'll enable transparent background. And then I need to rename the polygon to base sprite, which is maybe not the best naming conventions. So now we have the snowflakes with transparent backgrounds and when you destroy them they don't throw an error anymore because I renamed the polygon. However, they don't make the triangles when they explode like the other bumpers do. So if I go ahead and break the cloud. I'm sure you've seen it, but the bumpers break apart. So that's because the texture disappears when I queue free the snowflake before it gets destroyed. So I need to get the texture from the viewport. So in the bumper ship base class, I'll make a function to get the base sprite texture. And this will return get base sprite dot texture. Then in the explode function, I'll make a new variable for the base sprite texture equals get shatter texture and set the all the references to the base sprite texture to that instead. So now everything should be working the same as it was. This just lets us replace the shatter texture with a custom function. And now in the snowflake bumper, I'll detach the base script and attach a new one extending the bumper ship base class. And I'll override the get shatter texture function. So first I'll make a variable for the viewport image, get the sub viewport texture, and then make a static image. Then I'll make a image texture from the viewport image. So use create from image. So now it can be used in a sprite or polygon 2D. And now when I break the snowflakes, so they're not taking damage because I changed the script, so I need to set the export variables again. 
when you attach a new script. Something to keep in mind. And now the snowflakes take damage and break apart when they're destroyed. So I think that looks pretty good. But that's all for this episode of Derp Star. So thank you for watching and have a great day.